Components use interfaces to interact with each other. The reason for this is to keep the joinings or the connections between components loose and the components themselves self-contained. So that way a change within one component doesn't ripple through other parts of the system, forcing changes in a whole bunch of other components. Using interfaces controls the dependencies among components and makes the components reusable and replaceable. In other words, you can swap them. There are two kinds of interface in a component diagram, provided and required. And a provided interface, as you can see here, looks like a lollipop. And what this lollipop symbol indicates is that in a provided interface, the component realizes the interface. In other words, the component implements the interface. The other kind is a required interface, and that looks like this, a cup or a socket, or as I prefer to see it, as a wine glass. In this case, an upside down wine glass. A required interface declares the services a component needs in order to function. So the component uses the required interface. Another way to think of these kinds of interfaces is that a component defines its provided interface and it needs its required interface in order to be complete, in order to do its job. So. How do you show the relationship between these components through the interface? One way to do it is like this. You move the cup and the ball so that they're basically on the same plane and you draw a dependency arrow between them going from the cup to the ball. And each of these interfaces uh, should have the name of the interface. So this indicates that component 1 through this interface depends on component 2 and that component 2 implements the interface. Now a lot of UML experts will tell you that you need this dependency arrow going from the required interface to the provided interface. Others will say that you don't need it that the dependency is implied by the ball and cup notation. So you can use an assembly connector to show these components and the interface through which they interact. And that looks like that. You just put the cup right inside the ball. And this simplifies your diagram. Not only do you get rid of the dependency arrow, you only need to label the interface once. It's up to you uh, which way you prefer. And as you'll see in the next movie, there's still another way to show interfaces using dependencies and realizations. But using the assembly connector, let's take a quick look at an example that shows what a component diagram with interfaces might look like. In this example, we have three components, an inventory system, an order system, and a customer database and we have two interfaces. One's a product lookup and the other is a customer lookup. And as you can see, the order system requires these interfaces, both of these interfaces, in order to do its thing, in order to function. Whereas the inventory system implements the product lookup interface and the customer database implements the customer lookup interface. So this gives you an idea of what the components are, how they interact, and what interfaces they need to do their interactions. And as you can see from this diagram, using the assembly connector to show the interfaces is clean and uncluttered and also easy to understand.